first topic we're going to introduce respiration and then look at glycolysis. So by the end of this topic you should know what is respiration, what is the structure of the mitochondrion and how does it relate to aerobic respiration? What is glycolysis? So what is respiration? Respiration is a process in which organic molecules act as a fuel. These are going to be broken down in a series of stages to release chemical potential energy. And why is this chemical potential energy important? Because it's going to be used to synthesize ATP. The main fuel for most cells is carbohydrate, usually glucose. But you do get some cells that can respire fatty acids, glycerol and amino acids. So you've got two types of respiration, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. What do you notice is the difference between the two? Well, aerobic respiration uses oxygen, anaerobic respiration doesn't use oxygen. Also look at how many ATP molecules are produced during aerobic respiration. You've got 36. Anaerobic respiration, you've only got two. So aerobic respiration, you have a respiratory substrate, usually glucose, is split in the presence of oxygen to release carbon dioxide and water. You've got a large number of ATP molecules being produced. Anaerobic respiration, no oxygen is used. You've got glucose being converted to either ethanol and carbon dioxide or lactate. A small number of ATP are yielded. So the breakdown of glucose occurs in four stages if we're looking at the aerobic respiration. You've got glycolysis, the link reaction, Krebs cycle, oxidative phosphorylation, and then anaerobic respiration, we call this fermentation. So let's have a look at each one in a little bit more detail. So glycolysis is the splitting of a six carbon glucose molecule into two three carbon pyruvate molecules. So glucose is split into pyruvate. The pyruvate moves into the link reaction, so the three carbon pyruvate molecule is going to be converted into carbon dioxide and a two carbon molecule called acetyl coenzyme A. This then moves into the Krebs cycle, which is a series of nine reactions. And this does yield some ATP, but more importantly, it yields a large number of electrons. The oxidative phosphorylation is a process in which the electrons are used to make ATP. And you have water being produced. So we're going to have a look at anaerobic respiration, which is at the top there, in more detail in a later topic. So this is a different way to summarize the four stages. You've got glycolysis, link reaction, Krebs cycle, oxidative phosphorylation. Also notice where the different reactions occur. So glycolysis is occurring in the cytoplasm. Then the pyruvate moves via the link reaction into uh, the mitochondrion. So you've got the link reaction, Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation occurring in the mitochondrion. So what is the structure of mitochondrion? So the mitochondrion is the site of respiration. It's very important in eukaryotes. So it's the site of Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. Mitochondria are only very, very small. They're about 0.5 to 1 micrometer in diameter. And they're surrounded by a double membrane called the envelope. They've got an outer membrane, which is smooth. And then the inner membrane is folded into what we call Christi. This increases the surface area for electron transfer. So if you look at the Christi, you'll notice these little structures, and we call these stalked particles. So this is on the inner membrane. These stalked particles have got a special enzyme called ATP synthase joined to them. So the stalked particles and ATP synthase are found on the inner membrane. Very important to remember these. The inner membrane is also the site of electron transfer chain. So it's got proteins. And these proteins are in close proximity to one another so that there's an efficient transfer of electrons. Between the membranes, we call this the 
intermembrane space. The intermembrane space has got a lower pH compared to the matrix. This is because hydrogen ions, which we call protons, accumulate in the intermembrane space after ox oxidative phosphorylation. They then can move through a special protein by a process called chemiosmosis. So they're very this concentration gradient difference is a very important because when the hydrogen ions move through special proteins, ATP is going to be synthesized. So we call this process chemiosmosis. Then the matrix is the site of the link reaction and Krebs cycle. So what you find in the matrix, there are enzymes for these two reactions. And it's also got 70S ribosomes and DNA. So it can manufacture its own en respiratory enzymes. So I want you to copy down this question and then go through that those topics again and answer the question. So explain how the structure of the mitochondrion is adapted for its functions in aerobic respiration. Okay, let's move on to glycolysis. What is glycolysis? Glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm of all living cells and it's the process by which glucose is split into two three carbon molecules and we call these molecules pyruvate. So although there are 10 smaller enzyme-controlled reactions in glycolysis, these can be grouped into four stages. So let's have a look at the four stages. The first stage is you've got glucose being activated by phosphorylation. What do I mean by this? Glucose is going to have phosphates added to it. Where does it get the phosphates from? It's going to get them from ATP. The second stage is this hexose biphosphate is going to be split into two triose phosphate molecules. So count those gray um, dots represent the carbon. So count how many carbons there are. It's gone from six to three. Then these are going to undergo a series of reactions. So they're going to be oxidized. And then ATP is going to be produced as they're being oxidized. Okay. NAD is involved in the oxidation. So as the triose phosphate is being oxidized, so NAD is being reduced. So at the end of the reaction, you've got pyruvate. Now you need to understand how many ATP and NAD reduced are formed at the end of the reaction. So this is quite a nice way of writing it out. Two columns, you've got one for ATP, one for reduced NAD. So the first step is you have glucose being phosphorylated. Okay, a series of reactions, you eventually get hexose 6-biphosphate. How is it being phosphorylated? It's using ATP. So ATP is um, being converted to ADP. So on the left, you can see two ATP are being used. These are then going to be split into two triose phosphates. And these undergo a series of reactions where they finally form pyruvate. So the triose phosphates are being oxidized. And they are also... Um, giving up their phosphate ion to ADP to form ATP. So have a look at how many ATP are being formed and how many NAD reduced are being formed. So the net yield of ATP is 2 and NAD reduced is 2. The pyruvate, 2 pyruvate, are going to go on to the link reaction. So what are the products of glycolysis? You've got 2 ATP two reduced NAD, and two pyruvate molecules. So what have we discussed in this lesson? We've looked at respiration. We've looked at anaerobic respiration, aerobic respiration. Can you remember the four stages of aerobic respiration? You've got glycolysis, link reaction, Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. Looking at the structure of the mitochondrion, you need to describe the double membrane, so the envelope, the stalk particles, the matrix. You need to also have a look at the enzymes involved in the reactions and how it's adapted for aerobic respiration. We touched on glycolysis, so glycolysis is where you have a hexose being converted into pyruvate, how many ATP are yielded, how many NAD reduced are yielded. And that concludes our lesson, the end.